knock, knock, knock. Hi, my name is Julia Barron. I'm going to be your Bellarmine University nursing student today. And I'd like to go ahead, after I've introduced myself, and check your identification. And you are Alan Abdullah. Nice to meet you. Again, um, I'll be here today uh, taking care of you and uh, assisting your registered nurse. Uh, what I'd like to do now is do a very quick um, neck, um, vascular, heart, um, down to your pulses and your feet assessment. Um, so it should take us about 15 to 20 minutes. And any findings that I have, I'll be sure to share those with your nurse. I'm gonna go ahead and put some gloves on. I've taken your vital signs and I've noted your temperature, your pulse, your respiratory rate, and your blood pressure. And uh, when I um, assess that information helps me know um, the condition of my patient and how they're tolerating. I have a picture that I'll post on Moodle for you also, helping you identify the landmarks that we're gonna be looking at. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna begin just by looking at uh, your neck area, and I'd like to um, see what your carotid pulse looks like. Um, I'd like to go ahead and lower your head, and I'll raise your bed up a little bit since I'm going to lower it there. And he can tolerate having his head lowered. That's great. Uh, but when you're in a flat position, I should be able to see that uh, juggler pulsation and um, it's going to open up that neck a little more so I'll be able to um, check your uh, carotid pulse. I'm only going to assess one side at a time. And um, to ease my um, looking at it, let me here. I'm going to go ahead and remove your pillow. Thank you so much. It's a lot better for me to see what's going on. So I'm looking at both sides, I'm not seeing, I'm seeing some actual uh, visible pulsations on this side. I asked my patient to turn his head to the right, it's a little easier for me to see the um, jugular. Um, but right now I'm concentrating on carotid, okay. Let me go ahead and palpate on each side, make sure I can feel how strong it is. Now this is closer to the heart, so uh, a 2 plus would be normal, a 3 plus uh, strong would be um, normal. I shouldn't feel a four plus are bounding at this time. Side, excellent, good. Um, and then I can go ahead and um, auscultate the carotid uh, for any bruise. And for that, since it's a low sound with blood flowing through vessels, I'm gonna use the bell side, so low and bell. And I'm listening for kind of a swishing vibratory sound. And if I did, hear one, then I could feel for that to see if I could feel it. And again, you're checking each side separately. Um, so when you're flat, I am looking for that juggler vein distension, as I mentioned before. I'd have you turn your head to each side, and I'm looking for it in relation to that sternocleidoid mastoid muscle, and you see a little pulsation right about here. Sometimes you need some transgenital lighting in order to visualize it, and then have him turn this way. That's a normal finding when they're laying down. And when I bring him upright, um, that should disappear. We're no longer measuring for that. There are better tests we can do to really um, check to see what's happening with our patient for uh, cardiac output. Um, let's go ahead and, and look at the uh, precordium. And when I'm doing that, I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna inspect the precordium. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull your shirt down so I can see this whole area. And I'm looking to see if I uh, see any impulses. Um, occasionally, thin-walled person, you may see um, just below uh, the nipple, so that midclavicular line about the fifth um, intercostal space, and it may be a little bit laterally, that you're seeing a visible pulsation. Um, you can also try to feel for it, and you're gonna be feeling before and between an intercostal space. And when you feel that, um, heaving against your fingertips just ever so lightly. Um, it shouldn't be more than one or two fingers wide, so one to two millimeters. If uh, my patient had uh, COPD or was barrel chested, I may need to turn him to the side in order to bring the heart towards um, the chest wall in order to um, see and feel that palpation. Um, so I check to see if I see any kind of uh, heaves or lifts. Um, 
and then palpation, um, I can actually feel for that and ask my patient if he has any areas of tenderness at all. Okay. So I've been able to look at the precordium. Um, the apical impulse, um, where it is, the location, the size, amplitude, um, that's what I was talking about when I put my one to two fingers um, right there and I could uh, feel that. Uh, let's go ahead and listen, and I'm going to listen with my patient supine since that's the position I have them in right now. So let me um, go ahead and look at my cardiac oscillatory areas. So uh, ape to man is a great way to remember it. So aortic, pulmonic, my herbs point, which is about that um, third or fourth rib uh, right on the um, sternal border, and then um, the mitral and tricuspid, or you can say tricuspid to my bolt. Uh, mitral to stick with uh, ape to man, A-P-E-T-M. So let me go ahead and listen. Now um, I'm listening for the low um, pitch sounds uh, for any valve with the bell and then I'm switching over to the diaphragm uh, so I can hear um, my S1, my S2, 3, 4. So hopefully we're just going to hear an S1, S2. Doing the same thing where I did for respiratory where I'm checking my angle of Louis, um, looking for that manubrium, that's going to be my second rib, and then that would be that intercostal space. That's a great place to hear that aortic, and I'm right on the sternal border. And you can go ahead and switch right away and listen. And then I'm, I'm listening to hear uh, S1 and S2. And then same thing here. Now I'm over the pulmonic area. And now I'm going to move to herbs point. So like I said, that's about the third or fourth um, intercostal space right on the sternal border. So if I am hearing anything, I want to describe it by what it is in relation to the S1, the S2, is it before or after, and at what point I'm hearing it loudest on the chest. Excellent. And then two man, so let's go ahead and get that tricuspid. So I'm on that um, sternal border, and now I'm at uh, that fifth intercostal space. And in some women, you may find that it's just below the uh, bra line for this point. But you should be at or just below the nipple line, typically. Good. And then listening for that mitral. So now I'm on that midclavicular line. Good. Good, okay, so I heard a normal S1, S2. Um, I could hear it loudest at Herb's point. Um, at the apex, I'm noticing that the S1 is gonna coincide with the carotid pulse, so that is something where you could listen and you could feel at the same time and know that that was your S1 that was beating at the same time. Um, if it was an irregular apical rate, I would have to um, stay and listen for one minute. Otherwise, you can listen for 30 seconds and determine uh, the rate for your patient. Um, if it is irregular, you may want to check for a pulse deficit. And for doing that, you can just check the radio pulse at the same time that you're listening to the apical pulse and notice if there's a difference between the two rates. Um, and then, depending upon if you're hearing uh, systolic or systole or diastole, you may hear those extra sounds, uh, like murmurs, you might hear a little bit of a whirling sound, so again, try to identify where you heard it, and in relation to S1 and S2. Um, you can do what I did, which was bell and then diaphragm, or you could do all with the bell and then all with the diaphragm, but keep a pattern that way you remember. So let's go ahead and move to the peripheral vascular system and your lymphatic system. So I'm going to be checking each pulse site. Of course, we already got the carotid pulse, so we're able to do that. So um, let me go ahead and inspect and palpate, just looking at your arms and your legs for um, color, size. Now, this time, I'm going to be looking for any vascular or uh, venous lesions. And we talked about that in class, that if my patient has um, a vascular lesion, that that's going to typically be farthest away from the heart, so that might be on the toes. Whereas if they have a venous lesion, we're going to see a wet and moist, and it's typically between the ankle and the calf. Um, so I'm looking, and I don't see any kind of lesions, so that's fantastic. Uh, let's go ahead and do your pulses. As long as I'm by your feet, I'm going to check your appeal pulse. 
and I'm, I am feeling for amplitude. Now this is farther away from the heart, so it would probably be a two plus, it shouldn't be a one plus. I'm also looking at the feet for the color, um, the uh, temperature at the same time. You can do cap refill on the nail bed down here, so you're inspecting and then moving into palpating. And when I do the posterior tibial, it's right behind the malleolus and I kind of pull up and in and the foot usually needs to be at a 90 degree angle to feel it. Excellent, let's go ahead and get your pedal pulse over here as well. And I'm checking bilaterally. So do your cap refill, look for your color, your temperature, feel your other pulse as well. Excellent, and no venous palpations there. Now if you wanted to do carotid pulse, typically your knee needs to be bent just a little bit. I'm gonna reach back with two fingers on each side and just rest and I'll feel that pulse in the middle. That may be hard to feel based on the size of your patient. If they have a pulse here, they have a pulse here. So don't be concerned. Um, you have to find them distally. Okay. Popliteal. And if your patient just came from a heart cath or something like that, that might be more important for you to assess a popliteal, but you are going in the groin and feeling for that pulse on each side. And again, that may be indi indicated for a particular type of patient, but concentrate on getting those distal pulses. Um, and then let's go ahead. Uh, really, at this point, since I was just in the groin, I'd have to change up my gloves. Okay. Go ahead and check your pulses. Good. And you're warm. And the other side as well. And it's great if you can to go ahead and do them both at the same time. Great, nice and warm. And you could also do the brachial. That's the ideal one for a two-step blood pressure as we practiced before. And then we did carotid and we already did um, the apical, so we were able to check that. Um, Allen sign and Homan sign. So Homan sign involves the lower leg where you're asking your patient to point his toes toward the sky and when you pull back just gently, if they get a stabbing pain, that can be, it's not absolute, a sign of a clot in the lower leg. So if they did have that pain in their calf, you would be concerned and you would do uh, further findings. Okay, you also might see some inflammation with that. The Allen sign they're doing before you're um, going to be doing any kind of like an arterial stick for blood gas. And for that, you want to occlude your ulnar and your radial and have the patient flex their wrist. And then releasing one side, it should begin to uh, flush up again. Okay. And you can check that on both sides. And again, it, typically that's something respiratory therapy would do before they're doing a blood gas. Um, if your patient um, is a renal dialysis patient, they have a shunt in their arm, they're, they're not gonna have um, that flushing return because they've shunted that blood from that extremity. Okay, um, when I'm looking at the legs, as I mentioned, I was looking for uh, you know any kind of varicose veins um, on the legs only and also um, any kind of edema, much like we did with our skin assessment as well. And also note if your patient has generalized body edema, if it's generalized, typically that is gonna be some kind um, of an issue that would cause that, whereas if it's um, distally, you may find, and bilaterally, that um, that may be a heart pump um, lymphatic issue. So it helps just differentiate diagnosis why they're getting that edema. Um, so a patient who's on medication to diurese fluid in order to lessen their blood pressure and ease the workload of the heart, if they stop taking that medication, they may get that generalized edema to the lower extremities, um, the dependent areas. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cover you up here. I think we've got everything. So I'm going to... Lower your bed down, make sure your collet is in place, and I'll give you your pillow back. And if there's anything else you need, please call and let me know.